day is it? Hey gang, welcome back to Hey Bill, What Day Is It? The show that celebrates a new nationally observed day every week. This week, we have a combo of two topics because they fit together so nicely. This week on June 15th, we observe National Nature Photography Day. It also closely follows June 14th, which is the birthday of my favorite nature photographer, my wife Eileen. Photography has been her hobby for many years and she has managed to accumulate thousands and thousands of nature photos. She's also the one who locates and chooses all of the illustrations and graphics for this YouTube channel. She diligently searches out photos, drawings, and illustrations which are not copyrighted so we don't get in trouble with YouTube. We subscribe to a couple of websites that provide many of our graphics that you see here. Sometimes, however, she just can't find quite what she's looking for among the public domain shots. So this week, for her birthday, she gets a week off from her searches. This week, we're only using her own photos as our background. So she doesn't need to worry about copyrights. Let's get started with National Nature Photography Day using only photos by Eileen. Today's show isn't about how to use a camera. It's more about content and subject matter. I ask her to pull together some, some of her favorite and best nature photos so we can look at different topics among nature. I told her that generally, I didn't want anything man-made in the shot. We've broken that rule a couple of times here, but I think you'll enjoy them anyway. So let's start with some of her favorites, animals. We can begin with domesticated animals, such as this huge pig belonging to our neighbor. He's enormous and looks like a boulder laying in their yard, and friendly for the most part, but if he doesn't like you, watch out for those tusks. My brother keeps horses in Missouri. They don't do much, but they sure are pretty. We spotted this milk cow when we were in Germany. Somebody said that their right legs are shorter than their left legs from standing on those mountainsides, but I didn't notice that myself. Our basset hound Fred liked to hide in the tall grass and pretend he was an awesome predator. He could hide pretty well, but he didn't really look very threatening. The same way with Miss Kitty, but she always wanted clean water. It does make a kind of rustic scene though, doesn't it? Let's move on to some exotics. These are sable antelope. Their markings are really interesting and they're very good at protecting themselves. They can kill a lion with those horns. Let's move up the size a bit and take a look at these elephants. We spotted these in a wild animal park and you don't see them very often because they're much too large for most animal parks. Many times, our little slithery friends like to hide in the vegetation. You have to watch out for them. Giraffes are awesome. These reticulated giraffe are a rare sight. They don't lay down very much unless the risk of predators is really low. This southern white rhino is quietly grazing but is also keeping a close eye on us. None of the pictures you see here were taken with a long lens but this was in a wild animal park. This is a black rhino. They're a bit more aggressive than the whites, but they're still awesome looking when you get this close. This bear was photographed in a zoo in Essen, Germany. It's been raining, so she's not very fluffy. Sometimes you have to look closely to spot beauty, like these two caterpillars she found in a garden in Florida. This picture was taken at Fossil Rim Wildlife Center in Glen Rose, Texas. Here we see a wild feral hog challenging an African water buck for food placed for the water buck. The hog won out and chased off the water buck. Sometimes landscapes make the best nature photos. 
Here's the iconic view of Monument Valley in southeastern Utah. This was awesome and desolate. We didn't see another vehicle for 30 minutes and we were on our motorcycle. Looks like John Wayne could pop up at any moment. This formation is called Mexican Hat for obvious reasons. That hat is 60 feet across and has been balanced there for thousands of years. This tree is extremely hardy to grow here because there just isn't any soil, just cracks in the rocks. The closer you get to the sandstone formations, the weirder they look. It's hard to believe just how big these formations are until you get up close. The Grand Canyon yields thousands of great shots, both close up and far, far away. Now we leave the barren desert for the lush forests of Missouri. This is actually a designated road in southeast Missouri. If you keep your eyes open, you might just spot some beautiful birds, while in other places they stand out pretty clearly. Mountains always provide a bounty of majestic shots like this one in Germany's Alps, or this one. Here the mountain appears to glow from the inside. Sometimes you get so high in the mountains you can spot a rainbow below you. Or maybe you can have the thrill of walking along this ledge at the bottom of this shot. To get to a hostel that is literally hanging on the side of a mountain. Even Tennessee's Great Smoky Mountains can provide a vast rolling vista. Other nature photo options include water, such as the ever-changing kaleidoscope of the waves at the seashore, or perhaps a tranquil lake trapped in the mountains, or this huge lake in Switzerland. Sometimes you can add variety to your water shots with a lone rower. Even when the water goes away after months and months of drought in Texas, you can still get interesting patterns on the bottom of a lake. This is the floor of a marina in Benbrook, Texas. Floral nature shots are abundant if you just look down and out. Here's an example of one of my exceptions in nature. You know, man-made structures. Germany's littered with fragments and remains and ruins of medieval castles, which are slowly reverting back to nature, such as this one. The nice thing is, if you add an unusual weather feature, it will add a lot of interest to your collection. But when you combine them, such as here, they become extremely eerie. Man has come to enjoy nature so much that we mold it into our own dwellings and structures, even farming it into formal gardens. This old farm all tractor is returning to nature. As you can see by the tires, it seems to be actually taking root. Sometimes man will take a shot like this, a majestic lion. He will see materials such as this tranquil shot of freshly baled hay, and then combine it into something like this, a lion made of hay. A close-up shot of a larger subject, such as this zebra, can sometimes answer the age-old question of whether the zebra is a black animal with white stripes or a white animal with black stripes. Natural formations such as this often have novel names. These are called the Three Sisters in Arches National Park because they look like three nuns having a discussion. Many formations have been in place for thousands of years, such as this one in Arches, but that doesn't mean you should wait forever to take the shot. This arch has fallen since she took this one. Nature photography can have a calming effect on folks who battle with anxiety and worry because it is all God's creation and he doesn't want us to worry. Take a look at these beautiful flowers as I read you a portion of Matthew chapter six. And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. 
But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? I'm Bill Wasor, and this is Hey Bill, What Day Is It? Take a deep breath and enjoy nature, like my wife is doing here with her two Great Pyrenees service dogs, Coco and Lovey, among the blue bonnets. Have a great day, honey. I love you.